Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our lesson number 165 in the series of basic math. Today we will have our 15th lesson in the series of 15, the very last lesson in the series of 15 on the concept of absolute value inequalities. The problem is already on the blackboard. It says which graph satisfies the following inequality. As you can see, it is a plain old inequality. It doesn't have an absolute value in it. It's not an absolute value inequality. It's just an, it's a regular inequality. Here are the five answer choices. Our job is to is to figure out which of these five graphs satisfies the, the given inequality. The first one says that x has to be less than some positive number. Second one says that x has to be something more. Has to, x has to be something more than some negative number. This one says x has to be between some negative number and positive number. This one says that x has to be some x has x has to be some value greater than some positive value. And this says x is either greater than some positive value or less than some negative value. Let's see which one of these five works out to be the case. Well, first thing first, we have a negative here. When we have a negative in front of a fraction, for example, negative 3 over 4, negative 3 over 4 can be written as, this is same as that, can be written as either negative 3 over positive 4 or we can write that as positive 3 over a negative 4. It's up to us. Now yesterday, day, day number 164, which was our 14th lesson, yesterday's video, I did the problem both ways. So if you have not watched day number 164, watch the video and you will see in yesterday's problem, which is very similar to this problem, I solved it both ways. We solved the problem this way and we solved the problem this way. Today I'm not going to do it both ways, I'm just going to pick one approach. Why don't we bring the negative on the bottom? Why don't we bring the negative at the bottom? So write this as a negative 2 and on the top we just have a positive. That's it. So it's less than or equal to this quantity right here. Since we have a negative 2 here we need to get rid of the, we need to get rid of the denominator from the bottom. Let's multiply both sides of the inequality by negative 2. As soon as we multiply as soon as we multiply an inequality by a negative number, as soon as we multiply or divide an inequality by a negative number, we have to immediately remember to switch the direction of the inequality. It will switch the direction of the inequality because we multiply by a negative number. 3 of course, 3 of course, is less than 4. Of course 3 is less than 4, but if you want to multiply both sides of the inequality by negative 2, by a negative number, then negative 6, negative 6 is actually greater than negative 8. The direction has to be switched. If we leave it like this, this is going to be wrong. We have to switch the directions, which we just did. So now, now we have a negative 2 on the top, we have negative 2 on the bottom, we can cancel each other out and we are simply left with ordinary inequalities which is very similar to solving an equation. Now there is no difference between solving, solving this inequality and solving an equation. Whatever applies when you are solving for an equation will apply here. So let's do it. Negative 2 times 3 which is going to be negative 6. Negative 2 times negative 7 is positive 14. It has to be more than 2x minus 3. Let's bring the 2x to this side. Subtract 2x from both sides. Of the, this is positive 2x, so let's subtract 2x from both sides, of, both sides of the inequality. We need to bring the 6 to the other side. Let's add 6 to both sides. Now negative 6 and positive 6, they're going to kill each other. Positive 2x and negative 2x, they're going to kill each other. We're left with positive 14 and a negative 2. That gives us positive 12x. has to be greater than or equal to negative 3 and a positive 6. It's going to be positive 3. Divide both sides by 12 and x has to be x has to be greater than or equal to 3 over 12. We can leave it like this if you wanted to. We have found the answer. X has to be x x has to be more than some positive value. You see, x has to be more than some positive value, but if you like, we can go one more step and, and reduce it, which comes out to be one quarter. In other words, x whatever it is, x whatever it is has to be more than or equal to one quarter. But from our point of view, we're not interested. We're not interested in the fact that x is greater. X has to be greater than or equal to one quarter. From our point of view, all we are interested in is that what we have found here is that x has to be greater than some positive value, some positive number. We have some positive number. What that is, it doesn't matter because there are no quantities here. But whatever x is has to be greater than or equal to some positive quantity. Which graph depicts the situation? Here's the positive quantity right here, and x has to be greater than that. And all the values of x has to be lie here. The answer is D. I just realized actually that this is the same answer as the one we had yesterday, which was not very clever. 
which was not very clever. Oh, what are you going to do? I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.